What's up, YouTube? It's your girl Brittany, and I'm back with another video. Today, I have a special friend with me that I haven't seen in a very long time. His years. name is. Lamed. And we finna put his ass in the hot seat because I tried <laughs> to be nice to him and, and take him off easy, but he didn't want to, so. Brittany, tell him that he just came off doing 12, 12 years. years. This month. I don't, like the they first. know he just came. No, they don't. They no, no. see him in you your got channel. People that, don't, that don't watch my stuff from okay, your channel. Okay, y'all. Lanelle just came home from doing twelve years, but that's not who he is. So that's not who I want to. Fully gang banging. No, Tell him. No, no he is no, a changed not. man. Rehabilitated. So. Give me a water, son. We gonna start this video off. Y'all gonna get to know him. And I'm not gonna do him like Tevin and do him. Yeah, don't do me like that. Cause I'm so, already I'm already nervous. So first things first. How have you been? Uh I've been good as hell for real. I've been good. It's crazy. Everything moves so fast out here. I mean, but for the most part, I've been straight. So tell them about the threesomes and shit you've been having out here. I just said I'm gonna put them in the hospital. Oh my bad. Son. <laughs> my bad son. So, I mean, we get we get to that. Uh, we, about, we about to talk about it all. She asked part. me how I've been doing. That's, that's our I've interview. Been, that's our interview. I've been doing good. I've been right. doing good. I've been, right. I've been chill. That's their interview. It ain't mine. That's my fault. That's my fault. Y'all know Tevin. And his best friend like to be the main center of attention of everything. That shit is crazy, bro. Like, let me do my, let me have my mama with Brittany. That's my fault. I fucked Damn, up. Bro. I fucked up. But about the threesomes, you been having some threesomes since you been home? What I you been going How many threesomes? I think I had, I had three threesomes. I had spent two though. I spent two. It could have been five. I had ended up spending two. Yeah, it been, it been, it been like that. Yeah. Ain't you only been home for like two months? Like three months. Say a threesome a month, huh? No, that's my Nigga, that's a girlfriend. No, that's my fault. That's my fault. The threesomes, the threesomes, <laughs> the threesomes was like, that shit was like, that shit happened like back. That shit was so crazy. They're, they're like two in like a week or some shit. That shit happened like back to back. That shit that's happened fast. crazy. So what happened to your relationship? Oh, she came. What happened to my relationship? It wasn't even so much a... The relationship was, that's crazy that you asked about. The relationship was already what it was before I even touched down. Like before I, cause we were like, I was fucking with girl heavy. Mm -hmm. I, I was fucking with her heavy before I had, before, before everything. But like in 20, we had broke bad in like 2017, we had broke bad. No, like 2016, we had broke bad. Some shit had happened. And I was like, I'm straight on this shit. You know what I'm saying? So we had, we ain't never get back to what we was prior to 2016. But and then she ended up having a baby. And then she ended up having a baby. Then she was in a relationship for a long time. And then I was getting ready to come home. But we always been close and shit. So when I was getting ready to come home, it was like, damn, maybe this shit could work. Mm. And, and then it was like, when I came home, so much other shit had ended up coming out. Like right before I came home. And then like once I had got home, so much other shit had came out. And then it was me coming home, me trying to get my shit together, me getting my kids, parents and my kids. So it was like, I couldn't even focus on our relationship type shit. So it was like, that shit had ended up really just like dying down. But we still cool though. Like that's still my nigga. You know what I'm saying? We still straight. You feel me? But like where I'm at right now though, like I don't, I mean I can't even focus on that shit. I got so much other shit to focus on. Hmm. Okay. So you But it wasn't like I just was did some whole shit and came home and she was fucking with me heavy and I just came home and just and I just kicked her yeah. shit in. No, it wasn't no shit like that. I don't even play them type of games. Like any female that I ever dealt with while I was in prison, like wasn't sending me money, wasn't putting money on their own phones. Like, I didn't want nobody to feel like, oh. Oh, you was taking care of it. Yeah, I, 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 you know what I'm saying? I took care of myself in there. I took care of, my, I took care of myself in there. Cause I didn't want nobody to feel like, oh, I did this for him. So, he obligated to fuck with me when he come home. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Anything anything that I did when I came home, I made the choice too. So, I was fucking with her when I came home. But it's like, it was just so much shit. Like, I wasn't ready for no relationship. So, you said you got kids. How many kids you got? I What's their ages? I got three kids. Uh... Doom just turned 14, May 7th. He graduates tomorrow. And my son, Tiger, is 12, and my daughter, Camille, she's 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So since you've been out, <laughs> I'm trying not to get too deep. Okay. All right. So let's let's talk about some real life stuff. Okay. All right. So since you've been out mm-hmm. and you in the real world, mm-hmm. a lot of people once they get back in the real world, they always do something stupid to go back. Absolutely. So since you've been in the real world, what what have you did to where you like? You know what? I'm out. This is what I need to do. Be out. Be with my kids. What are you doing different than what you did that landed you in that? I feel like I feel like I feel like my mass. I feel like my mindset different. I feel like that's where it started. I feel like my mindset different. If I would have came home with the same mindset that I had before, then I'd be right back in the same situation. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have came home. I could have came home. I could have came home pitching and bumping into shit and, and doing what I was usually was doing. But it was like my whole thing was before I had came before I came home from prison. I was just trying to make my situation as comfortable as possible, so I don't got to go back mm-hmm. to what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? So that shit came with me going to get the me going to get my associate's degree while in prison. Me going to get these different trades while I was in prison. Me being able to go on the runs I went on while I was in prison and, and save me some money. So when I come home, X Y Z is taken care of. So I'm not coming home straight chasing and being a survivor. I'm trying to take care of that shit. What did you get an associate's degree? In? I got my associate's degree in business and applied science from Jackson College. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's like me, y'all. And, I, and I graduated with like a three point eight or some shit. Clap it up, Ted. No, Clap it up when you done pouring that salt on them fucking microwave and mashed potatoes. I'm with all the fuck shit. You getting degrees? Yeah, I got a degree. Don't worry about him, y'all, because next year, fall, I have my bachelor's degree in business, and I'm going to open me up a doctor's office. Mm. What's up, man? Tevin just want to be a whole ass nigga. Nigga, a lot of nail game interview but, with um, Fox, Fox 2. No okay, so that's the... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's good. He doing good for himself. Um, so, what else? So, what do you have? What is your plan that you want? Like, what are some things that you want to do once you get off parole? Not as far as like business, just as far as like, what do you want to do to like enjoy life? I want to go to Dubai. I want to go to Dubai bad as hell. But like, I've been like people been telling me you can't go, you can't go being a felon. But but the most part, what I want to do most, I want to travel. I want to get out here. I want to not just for me though. I need my kids to see that that the world is bigger than Pontiac. Because I thought, cause like even when I got locked up, like I thought Pontiac. I didn't. I didn't. I had. A, I have never been outside of Michigan. I, like it was when I had got locked up. It was cities that I, it was niggas that I was running to. In, that I was running to in prison. Niggas was telling me like, oh, I'm from Grand Rapids. I'm from Kalamazoo. These cities that I never knew exist. I'm like, you from where? I literally thought it was Pontiac, Detroit. Flint Sack, no, I didn't know nothing about the west, the west side of Michigan. Oh wow! So, so like, so I know, I know how. So you eat. never went up north or nothing? I never did none of that shit. Whatever. Dang, that's crazy. So you never went to, to you didn't go to Cedar Point with us? No, no, no. I never did, but that was my first time out of Michigan. When I went, since I've been, when I, when I got out, of, when I got out of prison, when I got the move around, it was my first time out of Michigan. Oh wow! I don't know why I thought you went to Cedar Point with us. No. Um. See, I don't got no questions because I ain't come prepared for this. But now, just I'm, now I'm loosened about. up. I'm ready for the Yeah, questions. I told That's you. What I'm so, if you could talk to your younger self today, just to give yourself like some advice with the stuff that you used to do, if you could sit down and talk to your younger self, what is something that you would tell yourself? Can I ask you a quick what like give me like an age to talk to myself? Because I feel like I feel like at different points in my life it was it, I needed to hear different things. Okay, so, let's say how old was you when you went away? I was twenty. I turned twenty in December twenty sixth. I got locked up in February. How old are you? I'm thirty two. Granddaddy. For real. Um so let's say your eighteen year old self. What would you tell your eighteen year old self? I couldn't tell my 18 year old self shit. It ain't nothing that I could sit here and tell my auntie, my 18 year old self that I that I could have that I could have that I, that, that, that I could have got through and, and listened. So I can't even. So we have to go. We have to. We have to go back early. What's your now. sign? I'm a Capricorn. All that shit. You a Capricorn? I'm a Capricorn. Okay. Yeah. Like when your birthday? December 26. Damn, my baby is a Capricorn. That's crazy. But yeah, 18 year old, I was too far gone. I was already on my way to prison. 
like we was all like me and my man when we, when we was out here, when we was out here doing shit we was literally already have, already having conversations about how much time we, like with the craziest shit in the world like we used to sit back and be like so y'all was already preparing to yeah go we was already prison. preparing to go to prison all my friends was already in prison like all the cheese key them niggas bro, them niggas so already in prison. you felt like since your friends was in prison that you going to prison it wasn't nothing for you to miss out on no no it, was, it wasn't that i i just knew the shit that i was doing i knew i was going to prison for i was waking up every day if i get caught doing anything i was doing i was going to do i was going to do a life bitch so at any given time if i get caught for something i was doing i knew i was going to do a bunch of time but i'm saying what you saying like your friends was already in prison i'm saying like what you knowing like i could possibly go to prison it didn't like scare you and that's even one of those was so crazy when i went to prison i was like damn how the fuck that shit didn't scare me how the fuck i didn't see cheese get life senses and that shit didn't scare me how did right. i see kiki get 60 years and that shit didn't scare me it's like Cause Deontay got thirty years before you left. No, right? Deontay got thirty three years after me. I was oh, the first okay. to go in my age group. But it's like even, but like it was like that just goes to show how far gone the nigga was. That's why I say at eighteen you couldn't nothing could scare me. Nothing could scare me for what I was doing. Like I was, we was just popping off. So at what age do you think somebody could have talked to you and got through to you? I think that eighth grade summer. Eighth grade, eighth, eighth grade summer. That eighth grade going into ninth grade. That summer, I feel like if if I was able to have a conversation. With the right motherfucker, and it probably could have shifted my mindset because my mama tried it all. She tried to mentor, she tried all this type of shit, but none of that shit never worked because it wasn't the right. It wasn't the right people. The vessel, the vessel wasn't right. The message with what they were saying was right, but me just looking at them, I'm like, bro, no, I'm not trying to hear shit you talking about. So I feel like motherfucker could have caught me in that eighth grade, going to ninth grade summer, even if, even that ninth grade, going to tenth grade summer, because yeah. Anywhere, anywhere like around there, in between, in between like eighth grade and tenth grade, if I could have caught, if I could have had a conversation anywhere between like 13, 14, 15. Yeah, somebody could have. Somebody could have probably. But I mean, you said your mama was talking to you, but. Yeah, but like I say, she was doing it. She was sending these different mentors, and she was having me going talking to these different people. But I feel like they couldn't relate to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I'm like, it's hard for you to it's hard for you to tell me to go do X, Y, Z, nigga, when you ain't been through what I've been through. True. So but like, even with you having kids at that time, it still didn't click to you like, dang. That shit wasn't clicking to me. Like some niggas, like I done seen it click for niggas. I done seen niggas have kids and, and it clicked for them. I done seen niggas get popped and it happened to them. I done, I done seen, you know what I'm saying, where it changed. I done seen niggas lose their mans relative to prison or, or niggas getting killed. And that shit just happened for them to where they just like, oh shit, I got to do something different. But you know what I'm saying? For me, it, it, for me, it, 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 it wasn't that. It took 12 years in prison. Like everybody always say, like it took twelve years in prison. Like I look at my mindset that I had in twenty twenty, I'd be like, damn, I was ready to go home. I wasn't ready to go home when I was looking at my mindset in twenty one and twenty two and twenty three. Even up to twenty two, like I was in twenty two, I was still getting called with cell phones. I was still doing crazy shit, and I had eighteen months before I came home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a year before I went to go see the board. So it's like it took it, it took it took it took it took every day that twelve years for me to really to for me to really get it. But and now. I, He's a changed man. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters is that he learned from his mistakes. So, what is it? What is something that you haven't told your mom that you would like to tell your mom today? Mm. Probably that I. I mean, I tell her all the time, but like I feel like I feel like even even when I do do it, when I tell her I appreciate it and I tell her I thank you. I feel like I can do it a little bit more, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it was like it was like some days that she got me through that bitch. Cause it was like it was like cause she she one of the people she one of the people that didn't miss. She was one of the people. It, it was a handful of people that was in my life during my during my time in prison that didn't miss a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That like didn't like didn't miss a day. My mom was one of the people that didn't miss a day. Like every time that phone banged, she answered. Every time them J Pays came through, she was she was she was returning. She was. Picture, you know what I'm saying? So just to, to let her know, like, and then she kept my relationship. One of her thing was keeping my relationship with me and my kids straight. So it was like, yeah, just just to let her know that I truly appreciate it. Because that, that shit just sounds so cliche, like, oh, I thank you, I appreciate you. But for her, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like, I truly appreciate it. Because she got me through some days through that bitch. Because that shit, that shit used to get hard, though. I had been 20 months in a hole straight, and she was she was there, like, in, them, in, the, in that motherfucker with me, though. Dang. Yeah, so... Just really that I appreciate it though, and and just to let her know that it wasn't her fault though. Like some people, some people see a nigga go to prison for all that time, like, and think that it was the parents' fault. It wasn't my mama's fault. She did everything she did. I'm talking about nigga, new bikes, new games, new clothes, new shoes. Like nigga, summer programs, basketball, football kept me in all that type of shit. But 
But it seems like it's always like that. The dude that grew up with the perfect mom, mm-hmm. like the mom that made sure they had everything, made sure they didn't have to struggle. It's like, to me, I feel like girls appreciate their moms more when their moms go hard for them. Dudes, they appreciate their mamas too, but once they get into that street life, it's literally nothing they mama. I'm gonna tell you something, and this just and this just my own personal opinion, and this shit is damn near proven. Females that's raising sons, I'm telling you, if your son fall in love with them streets, it's nothing that you or nobody else can do to break that love. That's gonna be the strongest love that a nigga ever had, and he gonna have to break that shit on his own. He gonna, it's nothing that you, you can do all the praying, you can do all the crying, you can do all the, 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 the social workers, the mentors, the moving them away. You can do everything. If that nigga fall in love with them streets, he got to break that love itself. It ain't nothing that you can do. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why it's like that for niggas, but once a nigga fall in love with them streets, it ain't nothing that nobody can do. I know niggas with good parents. I'm talking about like niggas live, stayed in the birds. And like, you like, bro, what are you coming back to the block doing this crazy shit for? Like, but it's just something. It's just something about them streets that when a nigga fall in love with them bitches, that ain't nothing that nobody can do for her. And they gotta go through that shit on his own. So, have you talked to your sons about being in the streets? Hell yeah! Since like, your son, what, fourteen? Yeah, 12, 12 and fourteen. And it's like, and it's like they, uh, like today, twelve and fourteen is like so much different, so much advanced, yeah. like so, and it's so crazy because. Like, I be looking at the shit that we was doing at 12 and 14. I just thought it was just the craziest, outrageous shit in the world. But these little niggas at 12 and 14, man, that shit is crazy. Like, these niggas, like, grown man. And then that paper and play for these little niggas. Like, that paper and play, like, it ain't nothing to see a 14-year-old. That nigga got 20, 30,000. So that paper, that paper changing a lot of shit. And the way the world moves so fast and how advanced it is. Like, shit, that shit crazy. So, but I, yeah, yeah, I talked to my kids, I talked to my kids about it because, like, they didn't have the best upbringing when I was locked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though my mama tried everything that she could, they were still going back to their mama house and they were still doing shit they weren't supposed to do. But I just let them know, like, bro, like, it can get like that. Don't think that you special to where, nigga, if you go out that bitch and do something that you can't go get a bunch of time, like, nigga. And I tell them, I try, and I try to tell them all the time, like, just use me as an example because it's not nothing that you're going to be able to go out there and do that I haven't did. It's not going to be a car that you done stole, the person you done robbed, the place you done robbed, the drug you done stole. It's not going to be nothing that you're going to be able to go do that I haven't done. So, nigga, look at me for example because, nigga, all my friends like that. And I'm not just talking about, nigga, like when they see pictures and videos of us, they be like, damn, it's a bunch of them niggas. No, it's not, nigga. I got more niggas that's in prison that's never getting out than I do out here. Yeah, it's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? So I tell, so I tell them niggas all the time, like, bro, you know what I'm saying? But... They, they 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 get it now and then it's like it's just it's just about me being here being consistent keeping them away from certain shit keeping them in and just really just molding and just changing them in mentality now while they're young that's why i'm glad i got out the, at the age that they was at because it's like i feel like if the nigga was ready to jump off the porch i'd be able to catch him in what you saying that you're gonna let them explore the world i think once kids see like it's more out there Hell yeah. they're not gonna do something to where they can't travel or they can't do what they want to do and then nowadays with the internet and stuff it's so much stuff for kids to do to make money other than turn into the streets Mm -hmm. like these kids nowadays don't have to turn to the streets for nothing all you gotta do is pick up your phone make a tiktok make a youtube video a snapchat instagram Mm -hmm. facebook post all of that and as long as you're consistent with it you're gonna make you some money Mm -hmm. but i didn't really come prepared for no questions Talk about the, you say, all right, it's easier, they can pick up a phone, but talk about the pros and cons of that. It's because it's, pro- it's a whole lot it's, of cons that I'm having it's, that it's pros and cons. It's pros and cons to that. Like, it's, the pro is, like, you could, you could, you could pick up that and make that video and really take flight, but you also can pick that, you also can pick that phone up and, and start getting off, and start getting off into shit that you ain't got no business getting off into. And, and but then, that's where consistency comes in. Absolutely. Because you could post a video today like me. Mm-hmm. I got uh, over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Today I could post a video. It only make 3,000 views. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow I could post a video. It could hit a million views. It's just you can't let stuff get you down. Like I can't look at my video and be like, damn, I only got 3,000 views. I ain't posting no more. You have to keep posting. You have to keep being consistent. If this is something that you want... And this is something that you have a passion for. You just have to keep pushing yourself. Because ain't nobody going to push you as hard as you can push yourself. 
But that's where that's where the message come in at. That's where that's where that's where that's where I feel like that's where the guys come in at because it's hard. It's easy for you to say that with all the understanding that you got, but it's hard for a nigga that's young as a young as a kid and, and not to get discouraged when something don't go that way and they like, man, I'm straight on that shit. And I think that's what I think that's what I think that's more so what bro was was speaking on because like yeah. You, but I feel like as long as you got somebody there that's motivating you, because say for instance, if my son came to me and was like, oh, I can't do this no more. I'm, I'm only getting a thousand views or I'm only getting this or I'm only getting that. Then that's when you could be like, well, let me help you. Let me let me do a video with you and see how I do it. Mm -hmm. Let's go out to this store or let's go out to this arcade and see if you do a video or it's just like certain things that I feel like as parents, you have to make that sacrifice to help your kid or even as a friend like if if you called me and was like my youtube channel ain't hit and can you do a video with me most people be like oh i don't want to do no youtube video with you because i don't want to feel like you using me but it's like if we friends if i'm eating i want to see my friends eat uh, absolutely I or if, or if we related or anything so i just feel like sometimes people just need that push or just need that help or just need that certain talk to where they don't give up because it's the, easier to give up that's than the best shit in the world when you got a trampoline to jump off of you got somebody that's already in motion and they're like oh come on let me let me get you in motion type shit yeah because yeah. that's how it was with Tevin Tevin kept saying oh oh they, they're not gonna like me on YouTube or this or that and then he's he did it and now look they fucking with it. yeah mm -hmm. all it takes is for you to do it you just never know you might feel like people don't like it because I even had those days where I post like a get ready with me video and I sit there and watch it and I'm like, ain't nobody finna watch this. Then yeah. I post it and a bunch of people watch it. I feel like that's I feel like when you had said something, when you had told me when you had asked like, damn bro, let's let's shoot something, I'm like, bro, like, ain't nobody trying to hear this shit. Like everybody see niggas come on from like like ain't nothing special about me coming on from twelve years. Like everybody come on. But that's years. where it goes when they say we are our biggest critics. Absolutely. You you critique yourself harder than anybody else do. You could see, I, I could see potential in you that you don't see in yourself. Mm -hmm. You could see potential in me that I don't see in myself. All it takes is for that person to help you. That's just like after this video, you could go and do you a YouTube video and then you could get a million views or a million subscribers before me, but I'm not gonna call you and be like, oh, you took my subscribers. I'm gonna be like, all right, keep going. Exactly. And that's where I think people mess up. People yeah. hate seeing people do better than them. Yeah, cause I'm about to say everybody not as genuine as as you as you sit as you is sitting right here. You know what I'm saying? Cause you gonna have them people. You gonna have more people that's like, oh, you took my subscriber, then you gonna have then you have like, keep going type shit. Yeah, you just gotta keep going. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know it's something you wanna do that's gonna make you better for your kids, make you better for yourself, make you better for your family, to where your family can see you and then gotta come visit you in the cell or visit you at a grave. Mm -hmm. Gotta get up and do it. Like a motherfucker. Because them graves and them cells is in now I'm reaching. And you can't come up out of that grave. Sometimes you can't come up out of them cells. Shit. You're right about that. What you want to hear, son? What you, you got to say? You, I feel like you want to hear something. They picking it up. What? They picking it up. I don't do your thing. I ain't got nothing to say. Shit. But yeah. Uh, this shit is fun. This is real life. Why is Tremaine upstairs? Because <laughs> Matt, because 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 son, because son, really, because son, because son, really, really, really like a joke. Oh, I like you that. Just hear about me, but don't see. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? He want to be Wizard Kelly so bad. Yeah, that's what I want to be. Wizard Kelly, 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 do what you gotta do to be a better person because sometimes you ain't got people that's gonna support you when you behind them bars. Hey, it's I'm just on. you. But thanks for watching my video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You got right, any I mean, social media you want right, them to follow? Man. I ain't like how yeah, yeah. I ain't like how my nigga ain't tell y'all. Hold on, what do you want to hear? I ain't right? like how you ain't you tell me. Hold on, Tremaine, hold on. What you say? Ask you. What would you change and all that? Y'all really never tapped into like like how you said niggas that come from the bird and come to the hood. Right. Because it's a mentality mindset thing. You gotta talk about how you gotta change the mindset. Absolutely. Absolutely.
everything. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel like I touched on it. It come, it come, it come down, it come down to, it come down to the mindset. It don't matter, it don't matter uh-huh. where Nick come from. Nick can be, Nick can be from Liberty. He can be from Lake Orion. He can be from Rochester. Like nigga, if his mindset ain't shit in Rochester and it don't change, nigga, he gonna do the same shit that he do, it hit, like he do in the hood. So I feel like it come down to a, it, come, it always come down to a nigga mindset. Hell yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that's number one. that got to change. That's like even with like niggas. That's like with niggas who come on. That's like niggas who come on from the big. It don't matter how much time you do. It don't matter how yeah, many. I, got, I moved to Cali to a better situation and went to jail. And went to jail because I didn't change. I remember. I remember when you went to Cali. Like, I remember nigga me and baby Tay calling. This nigga had butlers. I'm like, what the fuck? No, I feel like that's with anything and anywhere you go. But yeah, <laughs> you got any social media you want them to follow? Man, I don't even know mine. What's my Instagram? So I'm see you on my time. Hold on, real quick. Cause I got, I got my Instagram. I just got, I just don't know the name of it. Hmm. Yeah, this nigga Ted. Oh yeah, my shit is see you on my time to wait for on Instagram. See you on my time on Instagram. Show the camera, man. Follow my shit. Show the camera. Show the camera. Follow my shit. Bro, put it up to the camera. Nigga, it's on the camera, son. He don't know. Let me see. Put it on there, fuck. Oh, that ain't even my shit. <laughs> I want a whole other nigga video. This is his Instagram. Follow my shit. Or Facebook, your personal life. Wait, this is his his Snapchat. It's. Mm. I'm trying to wait for. This is his Snapchat. So make sure y'all follow his Instagram and his Snapchat. And y'all can ask him whatever questions y'all gotta ask him. Maybe he'll hop on the camera. He has an up-to-date phone, so he could do YouTube as well. He doesn't need a camera. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I mean, I've been sober, but you should have known it. I wasn't going.